So since throughout this course parallelly we have also have, we, have, we have also been looking at uh, continuous time versions of these algorithms, particularly the ones with fixed time convergence guarantees. So let's let's try and develop something for uh, fixed time convergence as well. So so continuous. So we are going to look at continuous time distributed optimization algorithm with uh, potentially fixed time convergence guarantee. Again the setup that we have is uh, we have n agents in the network. So each agent has its own private objective function. So we assume that that agents can exchange can exchange information about basically on their own estimates of the optimal solution x i and maybe something related to a gradient f i of x i. Okay, so agents can exchange this kind of information. So the problem that we are going to be looking at is uh, it's, it's, it's the same problem that minimize let us say r n i 1 through capital N summation f i x i subject to x1 equal to x2 all the way to xn and we are also additionally going to assume as we as we had already seen that you cannot accelerate optimization of any of any random convex function right. You need certain properties on the convex function be it strongly convex or be it uh, strictly convex and so on. So we assume this capital F with capital F of x which is nothing but summation i1 through n f i of x. So, this is is mu strongly convex. You need not have uh, all uh, all f i s to be strongly convex. Let us say all f i s are convex and you one of them just happens to be strongly convex and then, then we have already seen that the sum of convex and strongly convex function is also a strongly convex right. So, we just need we just want the team objective function or the cumulative objective function to be strongly convex. So, this, this is a setting that we are going to be working with. Okay. So, before we look at the distributed protocol, let us try and see uh, uh, an equivalent centralized protocol, okay. centralized protocol. So, in centralized protocol, we assume that, so there is an initialization requirement. So, we assume that every agent, let us say magically, every agent starts at the same initial condition. Okay. This is something that I mean let us now we, we, are, we are just assuming for now that every agent starts at the same initial condition x 1 0 is x 2 0 all the way x n 0 right. Suppose this is true every agent suppose every agent starts at the same initial condition and agents have access to global information. When I say global information what do we mean by that? Suppose all agents they have access to this particular global information i 1 through n in gradient f i of x x i let us say call it x i. Suppose agents have access, so this is a global information right because agents only know their own gradients they do not know the gradients of others. So, they do not have a uh, knowledge about this uh, so this is this is a global information and they do not have access to this global information. But for now let us suppose that agents start at the same initial condition and they have access to same global information. So, every agent is going to run this particular dynamics x i dot is let us say g and where g happens to be uh, or g star are the, let us say and g star happens to be minus
this is G star. Now if the agents start with the same initial condition and they have access to the same global information. So then their G stars would also be the same starting at time t equal to 0 and with they are being driven by the same input. Every agent is being driven by the same input. So their input is same at all times. So therefore at all times x i x 1 t is going to be x 2 t is, is going to be x 3 t and so on right. So I can very well write down the dynamics as x dot is negative 1 through n gradient f i x i not x i I mean in fact x i is basically equal to x here Okay. Did, did everyone follow this? So agents, so every agent starts with the same initial condition. They have access to the same information and using that information this control input u or g star is, is derived. And if g star basically is same for all the agents starting in the same initial condition. So everyone is simulating the same ODE right. And therefore they will have the same trajectories. So I can write x1 equal to x2 equal to x3. I mean I can represent this as x. Okay. So, have, so again we are looking at centralized protocol for now. So these two are big assumptions by the way in, in a distributed setting. I mean we won't have this agents initializing at the same x size because I, I cannot know what some other agent has initialized to right. And likewise agents need not agents to start with they won't have access to this global information. But let us say for now you assume that this is true. So claim is centralized protocol. converges in a fixed time. And the way we show this is we consider this uh, Lyapunov function which is essentially uh, so I am just giving it a proof sketch okay. So this is the Lyapunov function. Essentially it is nothing but gradient of capital F right. It is gradient of capital F and that should be 0 at when x is at the optimal solution opt optimal value otherwise it, it is a uh, if I look at v dot it is essentially summation. Right. And let us say if, if you if you happen if your individual objective functions happen to be strongly convex or so then you can further sort of uh, use a similar argument and you will be able to get uh, you will you will be able to show that v dot is less than equal to minus c1 v to the alpha 1 minus c2 v to the alpha 2 and this way you can show that this converges in a fixed time okay. So this would imply that you have fixed time convergence. So this fixed time this protocol this centralized protocol you can show that this converges in a fixed time. But this the two restrictive assumptions that we took was that the agents initialized to the same uh, same value which is never going to be true. In fact no one would no agent would know that what other agents have initialized to and agents would not have access to this global information. So we need to ensure two things one that if the agents want to access this global information for all times so that means we should we should develop a fixed time parameter estimation scheme. So essentially this is the parameter that I am trying to estimate like every agent will try to estimate right. And if you can show that the your estimates would converge to the uh, different elements or I mean this is if f i if let us say x is n dimensional this is also going to be n dimensional. So you are going to be estimating an n-dimensional vector and if those can basically those estimates they converge in a uh, they converge to the true value in a fixed time then that means in a fixed time you can act, you can start accessing global information. So fixed time parameter estimation scheme okay. So through by developing this fixed time parameter estimation scheme 
we can ensure that the agents have access to this global information. Now, what about this initialization thing? Suppose I have estimated the uh, param like parameters in a fixed time. On top of it, if I run a fixed time consensus scheme on x i's, consensus on x i's, what happens? There will be a time after which every agent will be in consensus, right? So that means if you if I call that to be my initial time, x, so from that point onwards, agents have access to this globe parameter estimation. They also have they are also in consensus. So after that, if I run this protocol, then every agent is essentially following a centralized protocol. And that is the kind of uh, OD or the uh, dynamical system that we are going to be designing. Is the idea clear? So we know that the centralized fixed time protocol converges in a fixed time. Okay. We now want to show that under the assumptions where like this centralized protocol converges in a fixed time, one of them is that the agents initialize at this agents are initialized at the same uh, starting point and agents have access to this global uh, information. So, if we can develop a, a fixed time parameter estimation scheme where we can estimate the parameters of this in a fixed time and on top of it we run the consensus scheme, then both these conditions are going to be satisfied. So, there will be a time beyond which both these conditions are going to be true and the centralized protocol and every agent would then start following the centralized protocol. So, we say let theta i be the agent i's estimate of this global information okay so let's say this is the theta i is the agent i's estimate okay so what these agents run is uh, so essentially what do we what do we want this theta i to converge to to some theta c which is 1 over n basically, basically this is what we want it to converge to right so we define this theta tilde i which is the error between theta i minus theta c and theta tilde i dot is theta i dot minus theta c dot. You can see that theta c dot by the way is not 0 right. What is x c? No, this is the global information that you are trying to estimate right. We want theta i to converge to this. So, this is this is time varying by the way theta c. So, that is why you have theta, theta c dot also appearing here and not just theta i dot ok. So, once you the time varying target essentially once you converge then you stay converged for all future times right. So, that is average of the grade like yes basically average of the gradients of not average or well let us say I mean average is fine yeah you want to if you can estimate the average then n times that is essentially what this is right. So, you are going to converge to the average of the uh, gradients of all the uh, all the agents some of the basically average of the gradients of the all the agents right. So, the theta i dot scheme so what every agent runs is theta i dot is omega i plus h i where h i turns out to be d by d t of and omega i essentially is a fixed time. So, omega i turns out to be So, this is your usual fixed time basically you are trying to run a consensus on theta i's that is why you see these terms appearing. The reason we add this particular term is so if you look at the dynamics of theta i dot right uh, it also has d by dt of gradient of f i and every agent would like have their own h j and so on. So, ideally had there been no h i there would have been this would have been a consensus on theta i but you also want to track this time varying gradient right. And that is why you also need this particular information to be included. And if you if I if you look at uh, 
So essentially, let's say if let's say if you have this particular omega i, so th so this gives you if you simulate this particular dynamics, you get your theta i. So what is the g i or the equivalent decent like basically distributed protocol that every agent would be applying? Remember, g star was this particular term, right? Which is n times theta. I. So every agent would be running minus n times uh, theta i plus signum this and this not signum but the so every agent would be running this because every like agents do not know what is what is what this global information is so they would instead of running gi g star they would be running this right where theta i would eventually converge to the global information okay the other thing that agents need to uh, need to ensure is that consensus on xi so individual dynamics of this agent would be gi plus ui u tilde i let's say where this u tilde i happens to be a consensus on signum let's say nu and x xi minus xj so this is the final final thing that agents would be running xi dot is gi plus this u tilde i u tilde i is a consensus step on xi GI is essentially this particular protocol where theta is basically obtained by running this. Okay, so this is what every agent would do. Every agent would simulate this, and eventually you can show that. Uh, and so if if so, essentially I can point you to the particular work, but the result says that if so, theta I would converge to theta C in a fixed time if the difference between H I G t minus h j t because these are time varying quantities now that is less than equal to rho for every t greater than equal to 0 where okay so let us recap a bit so remember in omega i I mean ideally I would have achieved consensus without this particular term but the reason we add this term is we want to subsume the effect of this disturbance. So think of it as a disturbance on your consensus term, right? And you want to get rid of or can subsume this term in uh, essentially you would want to get rid of this disturbance by using a large gain. So this think of P as a control gain. So if the disturbance is a small, so you, what you are saying is the disturbance is bounded. Then if I choose P to be large enough, my controller, the controller, the control gain that I am applying, if that is large enough, then I can subsume the effect of this disturbance. This is the similar to one of the centralized like uh, remember we in one of the lectures we had this additive epsilon kind of disturbance and we tried to get rid of this by adding an additional term that that is exactly what we are trying to do. So every agent runs this dynamics xi dot is gi uh, plus u tilde i where u tilde i is essentially uh, is, is a consensus kind of dynamics. GI is defined like this, which is similar to centralized protocol, but without the global information and in order to estimate global information in a fixed time, theta is updated like this. So once if every agent runs this, you can show that in a fixed time, every agent would converge to the optimal solution uh, in a fixed time. Okay, so that this is the equivalent uh, fixed time protocol for the uh, distributed optimization. So any questions on this? So that's all I wanted to cover in today's lecture. Uh, so essentially, gave a flavor of different types of distributed optimization algorithms that exist. As I said, the literature is pretty uh, pretty vast. So I mean, we have already looked at uh, we have on in, in the in the discrete setting we have only looked at DDD and extra, but there are multiple such algorithms. Uh, I mean, there in fact every every year like in every control conferences you would see multiple of papers just on this distributed optimization. So I mean, there are more advanced algorithms. There's PI consensus. There is PI algorithm, PI consensus algorithm, and so on. There's also accelerated uh, Nestrov, distributed Nestrov uh, gradient descent. So there are multiple such algorithms. Uh, and then we have also looked at uh, centralized protocol, which has a fixed time convergence guarantees. So I I hope like with with these algorithms in like if you understand these algorithms fine, you should now be able to solve distributed optimization problem. Uh, using an algorithm of your choice and you should be able to read papers and follow the literature on this. So in the next class, we are going to slightly shift uh, 
the gears towards federated learning. So we are, uh, well, not federated learning to a great deal, but we are also going to look at issues like uh, what happens when you have, uh, like the communication kind of issues and when you're trying to train very large neural networks. So it's a large scale optimization problem. So you may have issues sharing information with your neighbors, right? So there may be issues with regards to synchronicity that not every agent updates us values at the same time. So what happens when you have asynchronicity? So in the next few lectures, we are going to be focusing more on that. So we are going to look at parameter server approach, uh, then ring all reduce algorithm and so on. So that would be uh, topics of discussion in the next few lectures, okay?